Hi, we're Mallory and Savannah. We are two best friends that have a DIY blog called Classy Clutter. We truly believe that if you can dream it, you can do it. So here is some of our DIY meets design. Today I'm going to show you how I took this before to this after in seven easy steps. Hi guys, I'm Savannah from Classy Clutter and today I'm going to be showing you how I took some white mortar and I transformed this orangey out of date fireplace into something a little bit more current and a little bit more my style. Let's go ahead and get started. Besides the grout, you're going to need a drop cloth, a grout bag, a trowel, and some gloves. I am using a bag of white mortar that I picked up at a local store, but you could also use white grout. Okay, so mixing the grout is a little bit of trial and error. I like to add a little bit of water, mix it up, then add a little bit more water. For this project, I am mixing my mortar or my grout, so it's the consistency kind of like a chocolate shake. It's a little bit thick, but yet still a little bit runny so it can run through the grout bag with ease. I like to fill my grout bag about two thirds the way full. If you fill it up too much, the bag can be really hard to hold. After I fill up my bag, I like to squeeze a little bit of the grout out of the bag to make sure that the grout will run through it. Now, when I start grouting, I like to grout the horizontal grout joints first. That's so that when you go in to do the vertical ones, you have kind of like a place for the vertical grout to sit and it's not like falling out all over the place. While I'm grouting, I like to twist the back of the bag as I go so that the grout is being pushed out harder and smoother and faster. When I'm putting in the bead of the grout, I kind of like it to be about the same surface as the brick and so I don't want it to be overflowing too much and also I don't want it to not have enough because then it's going to have more of like a inset look to the brick instead of it making it be more flush. Now that the horizontal grout joints are done, I can go in and fill in the vertical joints. If you notice in this video, I'm kind of doing small sections at a time and I'll explain that a little bit later in the video. Okay, so I want this grout to look a little bit more messy. So before the grout dries, I want to smooth out some of this grout, either with my fingers or you can use the back of a brush or you can use any type of tool that you may have around that you just want to kind of rough up that grout just a little bit. So it doesn't look so piped on. There are going to be some spots that you're going to want to fill, which is when I use my finger. Kind of maneuver that grout around. Okay, so since I don't want this grout to look completely uniformed and I want it to be a little bit more of a messy look, I'm gonna take a little bit of extra grout that has fallen and I'm gonna kind of smear it in a couple of the places. Just so I kind of have a little bit more coverage in a couple of areas. Maybe over some of the ones that are a little bit more of that orangey tone that I'm not really loving. Just gonna cover some of that up. This grout color isn't necessarily the color that it's going to dry. It's going to take a couple of days to dry, and when it does, you'll be able to see it's a lot more white, and you're gonna be able to see that these little detailed areas are showing through in the brick a lot more. If you're wanting more of a clean look of a brick, you don't wanna do all these smearing parts, because that will cover up some of that brick. But because I don't love the color of my brick, I'm gonna do that. When I'm grouting a project like this, I like to work in smaller sections. It makes it a little bit easier for me to manipulate the grout around if I'm working in smaller areas versus doing the whole entire thing. If you let the grout dry too fast or too much, it will be way too hard to manipulate around. 
if you don't let the grout dry in a little bit, then the grout will just smear all over the place and it won't stay into place and you'll just kind of have white brick versus still showing like the brick true color coming through the grout. This is also going to be a personal preference. Um, I wanted a lot of my brick to still show through and so I let the brick probably dry, I don't know, like a couple of minutes and then I started manipulating the grout around. To finish off the fireplace, I updated my fireplace screen with a little bit of spray paint. It's a really simple, easy DIY that can be done quickly and also it's very cheap. If you're going to do this, you have to make sure that you use a special high heat spray paint. It's so crazy that with just a couple of bags of white mortar, I was able to completely transform my out of date fireplace into something that I truly love. It did take some time and some love, but all in all, it is so worth it. I loved how the fireplace on the inside turned out so much that I decided to use the same exact technique and change up the pillars in the front of my house. I love the result of both my outside and inside of my brick. It's way easier than you think to regrout your brick. Anyone can totally do it. You just have to get started. Be sure to check out classicclutter.net for even more tutorials. Until next time, see ya! Comment below if you have any questions and be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. If you want some more fun tutorials, check out these two videos. And follow us on Instagram at Classy Clutter.